Hey there, comic friends. I'm Travis, and it's time for What the Few, where I talk about what's going on with me and my week of comics. Did you miss me? I was gone last week. Actually, I was here. I just didn't get around to making one. Didn't really have a lot to say, so I figured, you know what, instead of coming on and saying, I don't have anything to say, and then rambling for 20 minutes, I just wouldn't have anything to say. I got things to say now, though. <sighs> where to start? Let's start by talking about those villain books that um, DC is going to be putting out. Um in September. So um, DC Comics as a whole, DC Entertainment is doing their um, uh, retail, not seminar, but they have like a, they have like get togethers where they invite the, the, um, uh, the stores in areas to get together and they kind of tell you, you know, them, get them an idea, get them excited about their comics and about what's coming in the future and, and just have some general chit chat, some back and forth and that sort of thing, discussing what uh, is coming for the future of DC Comics. Well, I heard from that, around that whole conversation with those people, that um, these, um, 3D com these 3D covers, the, the fancy 3D covers that they're doing for all of Villains Month, that they are so expensive for DC to make that they're only making as many as they have pre-orders for in advance. And the advanced pre-orders are actually going to be based on the, on the number of comics that are ordered like the month before that. Does that make sense? So if normal pre-order day for September books is going to be in, in July, the orders for June is what they're going to base how many of these comics they should make to ship on. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work because not all the comics match up. Because obviously whatever like Batwoman sales are, for instance, will not match up to a um, a villain book because there isn't a villain book specifically hinged off of um, off of Batwoman or Batgirl, for instance, and there are four books off of Batman. So I'm not sure exactly how that works. But that's all they're going to print. There are no reprints of these. This is it. And they're not printing tons. It's not like they're going to go crazy and print 200,000 copies of every one of these things and, and hope they sell. So what there is is what there is. So speculators, take that for what it's worth. However you want to address that. If you're kind of on the fence, I don't know. I'm still have mixed feelings about the whole thing, about what what I want to do or what I do. I mean, it's going to be really difficult to get them after the fact. That's going to really stink. If I just want the story, now yeah, fine. I'm sure I can I can go out and read it crappily digitally if I need to or whatever. But I won't have the cool 3D comic or whatever. And I guess this these things are being made in uh, China, Korea, and they're actually. They're so secret that they've got the whole thing hidden about how these are made, how they're making them, the way they're making them this time. It's not some simple process that they've always used in the past. But these things are like, I, I, to me it sounds like DC is going to take a, a loss on them, is what it almost sounded like. So, interesting. I don't know how you, even, even at the higher price point, potentially a loss. So, I'm not sure exactly how that all works out. And like I said, I have mixed feelings about the whole thing. I still don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'm waiting until it comes the month to actually order those books, see what kind of deal I might get out of Discount Comic Book Service, which is where I get most of my books through, and then kind of go from there as to how I want to address how I'm going to pick up those books and stuff. But there is that. Interesting all the same as far as that goes. And they basically said at that thing that every September, DC Comics is going to have some kind of event, some kind of gimmick, some kind of thing going that that's, they've discovered that's the most successful time to bring back in new readers and last readers is during the September time. So expect every year we're going to get something, whatever that is. So either be sour pusses about it, ignore it, embrace it, whatever. So there is that. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, Oh, some announcements that have just come out. Um, and, and, and around that. Well, well, let's talk about the thing before at first. And, and I talked a little bit with, with um, uh, David Raccoonis on, on Twitter. Um, David Raccoonis is his name here on the YouTube channels. Uh, about the fact that basically we're getting more of the same to some degree. We're getting more Justice League books are going to be coming out. More Superman type books are going to be coming out. People are bitching that, oh, that's all there is. Well, you know what? When DC started out the New 52, they had a huge variety of books. Resurrection Man type things, Frankenstein, you know, I Vampire, 
um, OMAC, um, just lots of different types of books. Um, and, and then when they, did this, when they did the second wave of books, they put out even more different books, the sort of sorcery book, you know, and those types of things, and Dial H. Um, and fans didn't buy it. You didn't buy them. You didn't take a risk. You didn't take a chance. You didn't attempt to buy those books. You stuck with your Batmans. You stuck with your Supermans. And, and so that's what's selling. And the comic book companies are... Um, and this goes for Marvel, too. I'm just using DC as an example right now. This goes for Marvel, too. Why, why you don't have variety is because nobody takes a risk on variety. And everybody sticks to those main, main books, those main characters. And so the companies are out to make money. So what do they do? They just create more books around those. That's why you got you know, five or six Superman books. So you got five or six you know, Batman titles. That's why you're getting all these Justice League titles. Um, it's because that's what's selling. They're going to create more product that sells. Not just, they're, they're not just about putting out the great work, the masterpiece, regardless of whether no one reads it or not, because it really is a masterpiece. That doesn't make a good business sense. Th those people may all be proud of the work they did on it and whatnot, and, 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 and there's definitely something to be said for being proud of the work you do and the proud, proud of the work you help produce. But at the end of the day, for your company, if it doesn't make money, that's not a success. So there you have it. That's why books are announced um, today, as a matter of fact. Um, and today is, when I'm recording this, is June 17th. A Monday, Justice League 3000 is a new book that's going to be coming out um, this fall. Uh, it's going to have our main core um, heroes in it, basically. It has Batman, it has Superman, it has Wonder Woman, it has a Green Lantern, it has a Flash in it. And this is set in the year 3000 or sometime in the 3000s. It's set in the future. It's done by a team that's done work together before. Dematis, Giffen, and McGuire are all doing this book. They did a really fun, funny, kind of comedic run back in the um, mid to late 80s. Um, I don't know that this is going to be a fun, lighthearted book, though. You look at the um, uh, art that was commissioned to create the new costumes for these characters. It's very serious looking. Superman is very militant looking. Um, Green Lantern looks really interesting. He's wearing this kind of like poncho thing almost, and a big hood. It's really cool looking. The Flash has got some big scarf kind of thing going on with the lightning bolt across it. Wonder Woman looks like her magic lasso ends in a big, you know, like mace or, or flail type thing. Batman's in blacks and reds, I believe. Uh, much more of a hard armored um, look and whatnot. So I'm, I have to tell you, I'm despite it being yet another Justice League book and whatnot, it looks like it could be cool. That art looks pretty cool. Check it out on, I'm sure everybody's got it on the web. Go to any of those um, channels, CBR, you know, um, Comical Resource or uh, Newsarama or any one of those things, Bleeding Cool. They're all going to have pictures of it, I'm sure, at this point. Looks pretty cool. Um, I probably will check out a few issues of that just to see what it is. And uh, I'll keep my ear to the ground, as it were, to hear our more talk about as we get closer to the book being released to have a better sense of what it's really going to be about. The other book that's being going to come out is a Superman Wonder Woman book. Ah, so much for um, hoping this relationship wasn't going to last very long because I'm not really keen on it. I hate the way uh, Wonder Woman is written in the Justice League book, period, and I especially dislike that relationship. That relationship doesn't do anything for either character, I don't think at all, and it really feels to me like it diminishes Wonder Woman, the representation there. The other side to that is, is Charles Soule is going to be the guy that's going to be writing. He's currently writing Swamp Thing. He's going to be writing what I think is going to be, end up being an awesome book for Oni Press called um, 44th Letter also. He's a strong writer. As much as I hate the idea of this relationship, him writing it m might make me pick up the first issue. I don't know that I'll pre-order it or put it on a pull list, but I might go to the local chain store and pick it up off the shelf and at least take a look at the first issue just to see. Um, I'm also going to wait and hear more of what is really in store. Tony Daniels is doing the artwork for it. Yeah, take that for whatever that is. I like Tony Daniels' Batman. I don't know about anything else. I have to admit, when I got home from work after hearing about the news and I looked on it on the internet, the picture that they've shown of, of 
Superman and Wonder Woman both kneeling down, embracing each other in a kiss of lightning all over the place and her lasso flying all over doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't do anything for me at all. Um, I don't know. Um, the whole Batman, Superman, I, I don't Batman, jeez. The whole Superman, Wonder Woman relationships feels somewhat incestuous, it, uh, brother, sister kind of a thing. I don't know. Uh, it, it feels an awful lot like, like, um, Luke Skywalker and, and, uh, Princess Leia, you know, they're related. So the idea there being an attraction there is just freaking bizarre to me. So there is that. Um, um, another announcement. We've all been kind of wondering, those of us who read Earth 2, who's going to be taking over writing that. Um, Tommy Taylor was announced today. He's going to be taking over. Tommy Taylor uh, writes um, the digital and then and then the paper pro version of um, Injustice, which is based off of the video game. I hear that's a really, really successful uh, book. It's selling well. It, it beats out a number of titles of DC's other titles um, in sales and stuff. I don't know if that's because it's tied to the game, but I know people who are reading it are really excited and really like like it. They think it's a really cool story. That's kind of a dark and grim story. So I don't know what that means as far as um, as as far as what our Earth Two will look like going forward. Uh, I'll, it's another person. I'll, I mean, I'm I'm still going to keep picking up Earth Two for a while until this person does enough damage that I can't take it or something. But I'm curious, curious to see what, what they have to say. He's an Australian. That's kind of interesting because, of course, Nicholas Scott, who's the main artist, still, she's staying on the book, is an Australian also. So that's interesting that they gave the Australians their own book. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, but, yeah, so that will be curious. I'm curious to see how that runs out. That, that's an interesting piece of news that affects me and my comic book reading. Um, I think that's it as far as news and that sort of thing goes. Another thing I want to talk about is endings. When your comic book ends, whether it's been canceled and 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 um, the creators are given the opportunity to to end it, or even if it isn't canceled, let's just say that the writer, the creators have decided they're done doing it and then they choose to end it, and they're given the opportunity to take the number of issues they need to to finish a story. How often are those stories satisfying when you get the chance to? Um, end the book. And the reason I'm thinking about this is I got a few of the books, of course, that I'm reading that are being canceled uh, or were canceled. Sword of Sorcery got canceled. Dial H is going to be canceled very soon. Um, uh, Red She-Hulk Red she is going to be canceled. Um, a book I've been reading, I think I'm about the only person I know that's been reading it. I, One, two, three, comic book bro was reading it for a while. I don't know if he still is. Hypernaturals, the Boom Studio superhero book, kind of a Justice League, not Justice League, but uh, uh, Legion of Superheroes style type book um, ended with issue 12 and I didn't realize it was ending until I got to issue 12 and it's the end it's done there there aren't any more to the best of my knowledge at, at this point um, so that needed to be a satisfying ending and it wasn't really and I started thinking about you know a lot of comics don't end well for me and maybe it's just that I don't like the fact that it's ending uh, um I, I don't know if it's the fact that um, I just lament the fact it's gone it's something I enjoyed it was a part of my life in some sense that every month I, I you know dedicated time to to read these books and, I, and and in this case I do videos too where I talk about the books and and so then it's gone and and maybe there's some lament around that I, I'm not sure but I do know that there's some books that um, ended really really well for me um, that 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 made the series even that much better for me because of the way it ended I really enjoyed the the ending of it um, it, it was masterfully done or, or whatever and, and I just think about that what books out there do you can you guys think of that have ended you know they knew there was gonna be an ending or it ended and they ended it on an extremely high note it it, it ended with you maybe uh, bummed that the book's gone but feeling really good about that ending you're given a satisfying ending the ending of um, this latest issue of hypernaturals it just kind of the last couple pages were just kind of a a scattering of this is where everybody's at now. And, and that was the ending of it, which to me, that's just kind of a sad ending. Book Two books I can think of right now off the top of my head that um, I really like the ending of, despite them being the ending of both books I really loved. Um, I really like the ending of, um, of um, Hellblazer. I thought it ended really well. It was a really good tribute. It, it ended how I felt Constantine should have went out. Um, you know, they didn't do something horrific with him. It, 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 it still was very, very con, uh, Constantine-esque. 
in, in how the book ended, the tribute that was there, hell, even down to the last page, the tribute was there. I thought it was a great, great book, a great ending. The best ending that I can think of ever is the second volume, third volume, sorry, third volume of Batgirl. The Batgirl right before the launch of the 52, the Stephanie Brown Batgirl, which I, that book I started out not liking. I read the first issue and went, oh, this is bullshit. Threw it down because it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't Cassandra Kane being Batgirl anymore and, and I, it didn't make sense to me. I ended up going back to the book, picking it up, absolutely loving it. It's the most charming book that I have ever read, I think, as far as just being a, a really heartfelt and charming book. And, and it's send-off issue, that issue that Brian Q. Miller wrote, and he wrote all of the issues. That issue, though, his ending, the way he sent that thing off was magical. It was, it, it so embodied what the whole book was about, the whole charming, I just keep using the word charming, and I don't know if that's a strong enough word for it, but it was, it was just uh, amazing. There are podcasts, if you, if you can find them, where I gush on and on about how fabulous I thought that book was when I did some podcasts with um, Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. You know, hunt it down. There's got to be some. There's one in there where I spend a long time talking about that book, about how incredibly well done that ending was. Very sad to see that book go. It should have never went. It should still be the Batgirl, in my opinion, um, with those amazing creators on it. Uh, but if you're going to end a book, that book ended brilliantly, brilliantly, brilliantly. And there are lots of other books that I absolutely love, and and the writers were given the time to end it. They knew in advance, you know, four, five, six months in advance how they're going to end the book, and then the book ended really sour or really flat or whatever. Um, and, um, you know, if you want to know what those books are, you can send me a message or leave me comments down below when you tell me what books that have ended that you thought ended really well that that wasn't something that was finite. You know, it wasn't obviously a, a miniseries or whatever. It was something that was going to be going on. I mean, we can talk miniseries too. Um, there have been some of those that I've thought have ended well and some that I haven't. But um, but as far as long going series or ongoing, what was you know viewed as an ongoing that suddenly had to become a a um, a um, you know canceled book or an ended book. Um, how 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 did it end? Did it end well? Because most of them don't for me. And then, like I said, I don't know exactly what that is. I haven't processed for myself exactly what that is. That's why I'm having this conversation now. And hopefully have this conversation with you because um, maybe that'll help me come up with a better idea a better understanding of why I feel the way I do about the book sometimes it almost makes me think I should be dropping the book before it ends but then the collector completist in me goes oh well there's like a couple more issues I might as well pick those up whereas lots of times those books aren't satisfying to me because I don't know I don't know if it's because it's sour grapes because it's ended or not anyway that's it for this what the fugue uh, thanks for watching. Um, I will catch you later on in the week. I'm sure there'll be a uh, comic talk. Comic talk, no. Sorry. Comic talk's gone. Comic roundtable um, on Friday at the usual times that that's hitting at. Um, sorry for that food paw there. I hope it doesn't piss anybody off. Give me any more thumbs down than I've been getting lately. At any rate. Um, I'm still toying with the idea of doing a, a show, a, a late night show. Um, originally it was going to be a, a Friday show. Now I'm kind of toying with it being a Saturday because I don't want them all on the same day. Uh, and I'm never sure exactly how long the uh, comic round uh, table um, uh, podcast will go. Um, so there is, um, there is that. So I'm toying with doing that, some late night thing that gets some of these... Um, some of us West Coast people that um, most of these other podcasts are quite a bit earlier and clash with dinner, putting our kids to bed and all that sort of thing, uh, which means they'll be super late, like I've commented before, but I'm still thinking about doing that. I just have to decide exactly what I want it to be and what I want to do because you know, the new show, The Roundtable, does a really great job of kind of covering the bases of a lot of stuff, which is awesome. It's awesome to get that all in one, all in one show, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the two big two companies and any of the independent books we're interested in, maybe some back issues and whatever other media stuff's going on. So I have to decide exactly what I want mine to be. Some of the stuff I toyed with is in the show that Scott hosts, and that's awesome. Um, so still trying to decide exactly what I want that to be, how often do I want it to be, because um, I want it to have some structure to it, not just be, hey, I'm going to show up at you know 11 o'clock at night. Any of you guys out there want to jump on? I mean, I'm, I'm cool to do that. 
there are a lot of those shows out that are like that where everybody just jumps on and they talk about whatever and those are awesome and fun to be on and stuff but I want a little more structured uh, show for my channel and I just don't know exactly what that's going to be yet anyway I'm running along so I'm out of here read some good books hit me up with some comments and um, I look forward to watching your guys' videos throughout this week and talking more comics on the weekend take it easy everybody